here at Hollywood Golf Course, the home, as we see everywhere around us, of, of Rory McIlroy. And it's, it's the beginning of March, it's pretty cold, it's pretty windy. And I'm guessing, you know, just like any other sport, not everyone's going to be suited by these conditions. And that's something you can kind of take into the way you approach golf punting. Yeah, of course. You know, each, each tournament has its own different conditions. Obviously, the courses are different, but we're by the sea here. And that, that throws up its, its usual challenges with the, with the wind. And there's so many elements you, you need to deal with. And in terms of punting, I don't think you can be too put off. Uh, guys who say, most recently, they haven't, they haven't had great form, and they come to a track like this that's by the sea and exposed to the wind. Uh, you know, you can kind of write the previous form off if they haven't been playing too well. You know, it's just important not to get too hung up on that because those guys that, that like the Lynx courses and, and the seaside tracks, uh, you know, this is where they gain their advantage. I and mean, we often see, I mean, we have Augusta for the Masters, we have Lynx Golf for the Open. For the US Open, it's normally a long brute of a course as well. Is it more important for those specific events to look at form lines in those conditions rather than just looking at how they've done in the last few weeks? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, recent form pl plays its part. It plays a big part, to be fair, but uh, when you're talking about the majors here, you, you know, especially recently in the last 10, 15, 20 years, uh, the guys who have won the majors have been, you know, top quality golfers, and mainly inside the top 50 in the world. And mostly have had wins on the board as well. Sometimes, sometimes the majors, mostly times not. So you, we're usually seeing first-time major runners uh, nowadays. So, you know, it's important to look at those events and the strength of an events. That you know, you've got guys winning on say on the Australian Tour and the Sunshine Tour and things like that. But the strength of the field isn't isn't too great, so you can't weigh too much importance on their wins, you know, as opposed to you know big PGA Tour wins or European Tour wins. Right, I want to see if you're a wind specialist here as well. So mm. off you go. <laughs> Quite often, golfers getting labelled as bottle jobs, mainly on social media, probably as well. I think it definitely influences some people's punting perspectives as well, saying that certain golfers can't win. What do you make of that? I think uh, some people are, are just a bit too quick to criticise, especially on social media, as you say. Uh, you've, got, you've had cases down the years where you know players have, have lost tournaments and you know towards the end, but it's so it's such a a difficult thing to do when it's such a complex game with the hands and in the head that things will go wrong and you know guys like Paul Casey's a big example like how many times do you do you hear people yeah on Twitter and things you know saying that he's a bottle job and this that and the other but he, he's plenty of wins in the bank Lee Westwood's another one he, obviously he's had his putting problems down the years but he wins the how many as well doesn't he so not quite possibly <laughs> yeah, he's in some form I think I was looking a couple of days ago I think he's around 30th in the world again it's, it's some jump some jump for him he's had a couple of stages in his career now where he's you know he, he's fallen down the rankings and come back he's you know it's, he's definitely not a battler i lost my ball you're gonna help me you're just gonna film me <laughs> Going with the trees. I think that would score very well for strokes gained off the tee. That's like part of, I guess, now general sports coverage and especially within gambling, so much focus on stats across all sports, whether it's expected goals in football, whether it's, you know, the American sports had it, had it for so long. And it seems to be that strokes gain metric is the one that people are looking at in golf for, for a bit of an edge. Is it something you use yeah. a lot? Uh, it's, been a, it's been about for a right few years now. Uh, I think it's I think it's important to have a grasp on the stats, but you know, it's, don't put all your emphasis upon them. Uh, I think it's important, like the you know, luckily in golf punting, we've got a few companies and businesses that have uh, that have really mastered the stats game. Do the hard work for you. Yeah, and you know, even the players you use these kind of businesses and all too. But uh, the stats are out there. I mean, you might need to pay a fee for a year or whatever. It's, it's never too expensive, but it's important to know, 
you know, especially when each course know what stats are important on them, whether it's, you know, strokes gained off the tee or strokes gained approach. You know, we, we talk about the Masters, you know, we've previewed that a couple of times and, and one thing that always comes up uh, every year is strokes gained approach, you know. That, you know yeah. If you want to make, make a living at this game and try and make a few quid, uh, you really need to have your head around stats. And just, I mean, obviously people who follow it would have heard about it before, but for those who maybe are watching this who don't know what strokes gained literally means, can you explain it briefly? Well, in layman's terms, you know, it takes a position where, where you hit a shot and uh, it, it gives you a value of how many strokes you would gain over the field, you know, so it, it's a no-brainer really, you know, you think of Rory McIlroy, one of the best drivers in the game, he gains most of his stats, you know, off the tee and from tee to green. Uh, you know, there's guys who, from you know the middle of the fairway, will hit it closer to the pin than, than other guys. Mm. Uh, so that, that's basically at layman's, layman's terms. You know, the, the stats will give you, you know, each golfer's specialist, so to speak. I'm sure Rory McIlroy's hit a few good drives here. I'm going to see if I can follow him in. Good luck. Unlikely. I think the reason why betting on golf seems to appeal to so many people is because, I mean, every weekend you see big price winners going in who are also kind of household names at the same time. Do you think it's a sport where, you know, there is more value to be had than others? And is that something you look to exploit? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, you know that I have a keen interest in horse racing and all too. Like, and, you know, I've got a, a few people that I would trust, you know, if they give me, you know, they give me a good bet every now and again, you know, but you see the moves on horse racing, you know, daily, you know, you can get yeah. You can get ten to one about five to one pokes, you know, there's on ten of them every day. The same exists the same moves just don't exist in golf punting. Like, you know, you'll never see start of the week McIlroy ten to one going off fives. If, if they do it's normally because you put three points each way on a hundred to one shot. Well you know you can get moves with higher with higher price golfers of course because you know there's less liquidity in the market uh, you know at that price but uh, I think it's just important not to get too hung up on, on, on the value conversation, you know. Uh, you know, as, as I say there, the, the value you can get in some other sports daily is huge, while golf you just don't see the same moves and, you know, you need to be on the right side of, of your golf bets for an awful long time just to gain a couple of percent, you know. Yeah. So, I would just never put anybody off if they think someone's going to win an event, unless it's a really bad price. You think it's a really bad price, you, you don't get involved. but. If you think you've found a winner of, a, of an event, or a possible winner, I think just follow your conviction, and as long as the price isn't too bad, and, and don't get too hung up on thinking, oh, you know, I wanted the 80s about that 66 to 1 poke. You, yeah. You know, it's just not that much bigger of a difference to, you know, at the, end of the, at the end of the year, you need winners on the board. That's the most important it, thing. It was interesting to see, though, because you tipped up Roy McIlroy a couple of weeks ago um at you know what is perceived as a short price in golf i think it was 15 to 2 wasn't it and you had a couple of people on social media telling you you know almost mocking you for making that selection yeah. do you think that's a, a trap you can fall into that you the idea that you know that's too short a price is just in itself flawed that you should be looking for you know, if someone's at the top of the market that doesn't necessarily mean that they're they're a lay you get abuse for put, putting up uh, for back on mcelroy you know with single figures or any other golfers but you know what people seem feel to realize is that you know, when you're back in a 33 to one poke, you know, at the end of the day, you're, you're each way part of that back. You're, you're back in a, a 13 to two poke to place anyway. Uh, you know, someone else's 13 to two shot isn't, uh, you know, more credible than my 13 to two shot. And especially when I think, uh, you know, McElroy's gonna win, as you said, tipped him up there a couple of weeks ago. You know, he was 11 to eight after the first round, or, or during the first round, I think he settled around six to four, 13 to eight after round one. You know, if you really want to trade out of that, you can. It's not really my, my uh, operandi, but you know, there's a thing to be said for backing favourites and short-priced uh, golfers. I think you've got to get in the trees, mate, and find your ball. Better. Tiger line. Yeah, too much though. What advice would you give to people who have maybe started betting on golf and maybe going through kind of a bit of a bad run uh, in terms of their discipline and how they should maybe change what they're doing? 
Yeah, well, golf's a, a crazy punting. Everybody knows it's the it's the craziest sport to get involved with. The, the roller coasters are, are tremendous. That's why I think I, I love it so much. But uh, there will be inevitable long downturns in your punting because you're you're backing mostly, you know, bigger priced uh, golfers. You know, anything usually anything from thirty threes to three figures every week, and you can't expect these the you know, reap rewards just every single week or even every single month. You go six months without backing a winner quite easily in this game. And that's just horrifying to think of, but at the end of the day, you're learning as you go, you know, I won't paint myself as someone who's perfected it, definitely not. Uh, even discipline-wise, I've, I've, I've still got the odd issue, you know, that you, you want to learn and, you, you know, you try and get better at. Uh, it's just a game where you're constantly trying to evolve and be flexible and, you know, anybody who's who's got any difficulties punting in golf, because it'll affect your head, not backing winners after so much time. You need to keep a keep a note of your profit and loss, keep a note of your bets. Uh, go back and look at it, see if you're making any mistakes, staking ways especially. You know, the bank's a big important thing in uh, golf betting. You need to have a, a rigid bank, you know. I would I would suggest to people to have a 200 point bank. You know, people see me uh, putting up bets one point each way, blah blah. You would need to have a 200 point bank just to, you know, give yourself a bit of a w wiggle room, and you know, because you could go six months without backing a winner. So, you know, if you've got a thousand pound that you want to bet in golf, and you know, I advise a 200 point bank. You would you would bet a favour a point then. You know, it's important to be just not get too carried away from week to week, and just look after your stake and be quite disciplined about it. So anyone who's had a bet in golf will know the uh, how important it can be to have a golfer whose putting is hot and how not frustrating it is when you're bat someone who literally can't hold a putt. So how do you go about trying to find the guys who, you know, are going to have good weeks on the greens? And how important do you think it is to do that? So you, you know, you know through the stats that who's a good putter and who's not. But at the same time, on any given week, any golfer can putt well. On a, across four days, it's not it's not a, an element of the game you can put too much importance on if if you're trying to find a winner. Uh, unless you've got, you, you've got various elements of you, you know you've got big greens, slopey greens, uh, fast greens. You know you know uh, greens where you know three putts happen a lot more often than other courses. That you know that would kind of level the playing field. You know we've seen it at Riviera uh, a month or so ago. But you know everybody misses putts inside four feet, so maybe those guys who uh, aren't the best from five feet and in, th that's the week they kind of consider them because consider them because you know every golfer's missing those kind of putts, so that would kind of level the playing field. But from week to week, you just gotta hope for the best for your for your player on the greens. Really, uh, it, it's uh, you can't be put off by a bad putter. How many bad putters have won big events? How many bad putters have won majors? You know, yeah. Bubba Watson's. You know, it's excruciating to watch him at times when you're on him and uh, tiddles everything into the hole. The stroke's terrible. Even Dustin Johnson's strokes, not the, not the greatest. But you know, these guys have won majors, and you know, you, you just can't dismiss anybody who's a bad putter. And how much do you look at the the grass type? It's something that we hear a lot about these days. What the different grass type is, and how certain putters play on that grass. Yeah, I think that's more important than anything. Uh, you know, as I've mentioned before, you can invest in a few star engines and and see everything for yourself. There's guys who but far better on Bermuda greens, and then there's guys who really cannot stand Poana greens, and, and, and you know there's, there's others who absolutely love it, who who will putts for fun. Uh, so yeah, that, that's more important instead of just looking at the putting stats, where you know you see guys who who are good from ten feet and in, twenty feet and in. Look more at the surface, and and see, and see who's suited by the surface in that particular week. Right, no pressure now. See how you get on with these greens. I don't know what grass it is. <laughs> I don't think it'll matter to me. <laughs> oh! <laughs> how has that not dropped? <laughs> All right, good effort. Got the ugliest putting stroke in the UK. It's a bit of mileage on that yet. Oh, 
I don't think we troubled uh, any of Rory's scores, sadly, did we? So. No, definitely not. Maybe tomorrow. Yes. Yeah.